It's Thursday, February 18th, 2021. Thanks for tuning in to the Day Weather Podcast today. Well, the warmer weather is coming, but we're going to have to get a little bit of wind to deal with, I'm afraid to say. As is always the case, as Arctic air leaves the high plains and the front range of the Rockies, there's always a big shift in temperature, but importantly, air pressure. And this change in air pressure from the Arctic cold to the warmer Pacific air leads to wind in the usual windy areas along and east of the divide. West of the divide, you're not going to have to deal with it, but along the front range of Wyoming and parts of Colorado, the wind is going to be a problem on Friday. That's going to warm things up, but we've got blowing snow problems coming. Interstate 80, Cheyenne to Rollins, I-25, Casper to Cheyenne, you're going to have blowing snow. Shirley Basin, muddy gap areas of Wyoming, and the mountain passes of Wyoming, and also the mountain passes of Colorado, that would include I-70, the wind is going to cause some blowing snow concerns, so keep that in mind. We have a storm system coming off the Pacific for late Friday and the Saturday. That's going to bring another nice shot of snow to the mountains, and we're going to see a little bit of snow late Friday night into the day Saturday on the plains. This is not a big storm. It's what we've seen all winter, quick moving, but it will bring another nice shot of snow to the high country. We have a nice warm up coming. A good old fashioned Chinook wind will give us the warmest temperatures in quite a while by Monday and Tuesday. However, a possible storm system is brewing for the middle of next week. We'll show you that. We'll keep an eye on it for you. It's a week away, but something that we're going to need to watch. These are the current temperatures as of 5 a.m. this morning across our side of the northern hemisphere. And really, it's really cold everywhere except South Georgia and Florida. Now, Florida right now just enjoying some really warm temperatures and some nice conditions as the southerly wind flow at the trough is pumping in warm air in there. But the rest of the whole continent is just brutally cold for even the middle of February. Look at the ice and snow cover. Now this was as of Wednesday afternoon. The blue represents where there's snow on the ground. The orange represents where the ice is on the lakes and in the northern areas of the oceans. And you can see the southward extent of that snow just barely getting to the Gulf Coast. In fact, it was on the Gulf Coast as it retreated a little bit, but that is about as far south as you're going to see a snow map and an ice map like this. Today, we see the pattern evolving and starting to move a little bit. The jet stream still showing a ridge of high pressure along the West Coast with a big bowl of low pressure in the nascent midsection, continuing to hold that Arctic air, and really, it's just really slowly moving. So it's still going to be a process to push it eastward. But this guy right here is going to go a long way to get this guy to move and finally bust up the Arctic air mass. It's taken more than 10 days for that to happen. As we get into Friday night and Saturday morning, this storm up here, which looks really impressive, becomes a weaker system right here moving into the Wasatch Front of Utah by late Friday night and the Saturday morning into the Tetons. And then it will move basically through the region very quickly during the day Saturday. As it does so, it'll produce snow in the Pacific Northwest and in the mountain area here. As it moves through, notice westerly winds aloft will bring relief from the severe cold to the south. It's still going to be really cold up here, but at least the south will be able to get some warmer temperatures to move in. Relative to normal, though, they'll still be colder than normal. We'll show you that here in a minute. This is what the snowfall forecast looks like through Sunday afternoon. You can see there's going to be a little bit of snow on the plains. There's going to be better snow in the mountains. We do need to watch out for travelers along I-80 in Utah and Wyoming, as well as sections of I-25 here this weekend could have some travel problems and of course the mountain passes will be some problems watch i-70 into colorado as well as a problem for travel as the system comes in friday night and during the day on saturday but it's a quick mover as we get into monday we have another trough up here coming in off of the coast of british columbia this is the system that's going to be passing through this weekend it goes all the way to the east coast that will cause some snow and winter weather conditions there. But as we showed you yesterday, what's going to happen early next week is there's going to be a push of a more mild Pacific air mass into the western United States and the southern U.S. And that's going to lead to early next week giving us a bit of a Chinook. 
So for Wyoming and Colorado and the Western High Plains, we should be able to warm up. And these are temperatures relative to average by Monday afternoon. Look at the big warm up in Canada. That Pacific air gets a push in and notice it starts to warm up across Wyoming and the front range of Colorado into West Texas. Notice there's still remnants of the Arctic air hanging tough here. That's really due to some existing snow cover that will still be around then. But this is a much more optimistic and warmer forecast for the first half of next week. Although, look at all that cold up in Alaska and the Northwest Territories. Remember, what I'm showing you are anomalies. So if it's colder than normal in the Northwest Territories in Alaska, it's really cold up there. We got to watch this pocket of cold air later on. Now, as we get to the middle of next week, this is by next Thursday. We have the potential for a trough to move through the Four Corners region, followed by another low that would arrive next weekend. We're going to put the old question mark on here like we like to do when we see a storm that's a week away. And when we see a storm on the computer modeling, we always have to be very suspicious of it. However, we're getting into late February, heading into early March. We should expect to start to see storms like this. And I tell you, this is like gas and matches. When you still have this much Arctic air up here, I mean, this is brutally cold right here by the middle to the end of next week. As I showed you in a podcast earlier in the week, the Northern Hemisphere is going to stay really, really cold into early March. And when you start to get the longer days now, the warmer days, that higher sun angle, that's especially happening here in the mid latitudes. Well, you start to get more warm air coming up from the south, but still a lot of Arctic air coming from the north. That's why you tend to get the bigger storms in March and April. You tend to get that bigger contrast between air temperatures. And so what we're talking about here is setting the stage late February and early March for the lower 48 states to probably have a couple of big storms. So we're not done by any means, even though this Arctic air mass is easing, there's other problems down the road for livestock interests and power resources across the lower 48 states. This shows you an example of what happens. As we go into Wednesday and Thursday of next week, cold air from that trough comes right back into the western United States and actually gets into areas west of the divide, but does pump in warmer air for a warm up there along the east coast and the central and eastern areas of the United States. So by the middle to the end of next week, the big relief is coming from the Arctic air, but not until then. Now, I want to talk a little bit about wind and blowing snow problems for you travelers. This is the wind gust forecast chart for about 11 a.m. on Friday. This is where we're going to have a problem. I-25 from Casper to the Colorado border, then I-80 from Cheyenne to Rollins into eastern Sweetwater County. This area will have blowing snow and very strong winds and possible low over risk. So travelers keep that in mind. Notice the strong winds stay off the I-25 corridor, but very strong winds in Rocky Mountain National Park, Estes Park, and those areas there. And that's why there's going to be a problem if you're traveling I-70. There's going to be some blowing snow as a concern as well. Now, the good news is it's a short-lived wind episode, and the winds won't be nearly as bad heading into the weekend. Thanks for watching and listening to the Day Weather Podcast. We'll have more for you on Friday. Have a good Thursday.